A mother dies while carrying a child in her womb, but her husband pulls off an astounding feat. Suleiman maintained his composure as he sat in the waiting area of the hospital where his wife had been admitted. The 40-year-old sat in silence seemingly unconcerned. Anyone else in his situation would be in a state of panic after the previous few hours had been so severe. Suleiman, on the other hand, was a man of faith. He was confident that because he was so close to God, nothing negative could happen to him. And ever since he arrived at the hospital, he had a sense of security as he prayed for the well-being of his wife and his son's health. Everything had happened so rapidly that the medical personnel had barely had time to ask Suleiman for the name and age of his wife, as well as the date of her pregnancy. His wife, on the other hand, had been stabilized, and in a more measured manner, he was contacted by a nurse who wanted to ask him more specific questions about his wife. Suleiman took the time to explain everything in detail. He informed her that his wife was 41 years old and that she'd previously become pregnant but was unable to give birth to the child due to an abortion, but she had not experienced any issues with the present pregnancy. In truth, the events had taken everyone completely by surprise. Yanina, the expectant mother, had previously competed as a high-performance athlete. She finished sixth in the gold championships in the same discipline and won the national ice skating title in the process. Currently, despite the fact that she'd previously retired from competitive skating, she devoted her time to training young skaters who wished to follow in her footsteps. Despite the fact that she's 25 weeks pregnant, she's not taken time off from work on the ice rink. Suleiman hesitated for the first time when he told the nurse everything that had happened. Was he guilty for all that had transpired since he had not asked Yanina to take a break? Hesitantly, waiting was not an option at this point. It was time to hold the god even more tenaciously before and to continue to tell the nurse about what had happened. It was reported by Yanina's co-workers that the woman had not displayed any signs that she would have indicated her illness and that she arrived at work as usual, cheerful and with a positive attitude that had become a trademark. However, the former athlete slumped and fell to the ground in a matter of seconds after she began to speak. One of her students was nearby and prevented the woman from smashing into the ground with her entire body weight. The girl was able to shield her from the immediate hit by taking her in her arms. After that, they summoned an ambulance and Suleiman arrived at the hospital within minutes, where he'd been waiting for more than two hours. The nurse was only permitted to tell Suleiman the truth and she did so. Despite the fact that Yanina was in critical condition, she was still alive. The ultrasound that she had done on her part revealed no signs of any health problems with the baby. Even with the mother's failing health, the child has continued to develop normally and strongly. The doctor's unofficial opinion, which was still subject to change while they awaited the results of the subsequent examinations, Yanina had been involved in that accident as a result of forcing her body into a state of pregnancy, when it would have been wiser to wait at that moment. Suleiman's next two hours were a source of frustration for him. His calmness allowed him to hold on tight to his faith and pray fervently for union, his well-being at various points during the ordeal. However, he did not realize that the uncertainty that had arisen within him was growing stronger and stronger, and his prayers were being interrupted by intrusive thoughts in which his mind made him feel responsible for the health of his wife and child. In the meantime, all he had to do was wait. Then suddenly, a doctor approached him with a face of a few close acquaintances. He was an older gentleman who was very well versed in this field. He explained to Suleiman that the testing proved that Yanina did have a tumor in her brain that had grown rapidly until it had covered all of her blood vessels and caused her to become dizzy. It was surprising the woman hadn't experienced any discomfort as a result, but it's been known to happen in some instances. The doctor looked down at the ground with some trepidation and then without further ado, admitted to Suleiman that Yanina's prospects of survival were virtually non-existent, and that for the time being the most important thing was to save the child's life as quickly as possible. Suleiman was in a state of shock. He had to deal with the prospect of losing the love of his life, the woman who transformed him into a better person, who gave him in everything and to whom he had given everything in return. Fortunately, circumstances pushed him to demonstrate strength that he didn't possess. As the life of his child was still in jeopardy, Suleiman had no idea how long it would be before the doctor came around to see him once more. While this was going on, he did nothing but pray. Replaying the tales of miraculous recoveries that he'd heard before, he held it on to them as evidence that nothing is impossible for God and that Yanina could survive no matter what the doctors told him. Unfortunately, it appeared the miracle didn't occur. The same doctor met Suleiman a few hours later and much to Suleiman's dismay, admitted that all humanly efforts had been done. However, not only had Yanina died, but so did the baby as well. After learning how much Suleiman adored his wife, the doctor predicted that Suleiman would break down and scream and that they would have to calm him down, possibly using sedatives. So the doctor had informed the nurses to prepare everything to help their husband. But Suleiman did not ask for anything more than permission to stay farewell to his beloved and his daughter, which was contrary to expectations. Suleiman was also perplexed as to why he wasn't crying at the time. What he felt was as if some unknown power had taken control of him and was acting in his place, dominating him and instructing him that he needed to do. He knelt in the chamber where Yanina was present, folded his hands and lifted his earnest prayer to the heavens. Yanina's clinical death had been reported on the medical monitor until a few moments ago when a flatline appeared signaling her death. The monitor had now been restarted. 
Suleiman alerted the medical personnel and they were successful in connecting Yanina to a machine to keep her heart pumping. While strong doses of steroids were administered intravenously to help the fetus's lungs continue to function. Unfortunately, Yanina died of her injuries two days later. The miracle, on the other hand, had already occurred. Doctors were able to keep the infant alive and perform a post-mortem cesarean delivery because they had the time. They surgically separated the kid from her deceased mother and kept her alive in an incubator until her health had stabilized sufficiently to be transferred to her father. Despite the fact that Suleiman was deeply saddened by Yanina's death, the thanks he felt towards God for the miracle that had been performed outweighed his sorrow. He requested not to be alone and was granted his wish because life had provided him with the opportunity to continue by the side of his daughter, a beautiful girl who inherited from her mother the ability to overcome adversity and whom Suleiman was confident would grow up to be a great champion of life.